Good morning, I'm Joan London. Imagine, if you will, that we're not in a small Manhattan theater. Good morning, America may go on the air at 7 a.m., but our workday starts some three hours earlier, at 4 a.m. to be exact. Rather, comedian Rachel Dratch takes us into the pre-dawn home of Joan London. I'm a fanatic about not disturbing the family in the morning, so I take the extra precaution of oiling the door hinges every month or so to prevent any loud squeaks. I'll be reading from One Lifetime is Not Enough by Zsa Zsa Gabor. Next, Mario Cantone escorts us behind prison walls and the horror of Zsa Zsa's 72 hours in jail. Terrified, I try to block out the noise, as I do. I realize that for the first time since I am a child, I, who normally sleep naked except for diamond earrings, <laughs> am not wearing them. The show is called Celebrity Autobiography. We'll be reading from Burning Up on tour with the Jonas Brothers. My Life by Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Sex by Madonna. Yeah! Actors and comedians reading from actual celebrities, actual autobiographies. This is our artistic, artistic <laughs> mountain of, of material. That the creators and sometime performers are Eugene Pack and Dale Ray Fell. Do you think this could be miles in ago. Moment? <laughs> Miley Cyrus? The Miley Cyrus. Talk about <laughs> suffering for their art. They've read more than 300 celebrity autobiographies. After the show, people come up to different people in it and say, oh, that was really funny what you wrote, or did you write this, or who put this? But it's real. I am reading the poems of Suzanne Summers. <laughs> That's right, the poetry of Suzanne Summers. This is from the volume, Touch Me. Recited by actress Rosie Perez. I like the gentle, quiet loneliness of being alone. <laughs> Although I thought of a friend last night and almost called, but I decided not to because my hair needed washing. Does this change the way you think about poetry in any way? Now, if anyone has any extra love, even a heartbeat, or a touch or two. I wish they wouldn't waste it on dogs. <laughs> you know these people, well, you think you know them, and then you read something that's intimate and personal, and you're like, oh, that's who they really are. Suzanne Summers isn't just the thigh master lady, she also doesn't like dogs too much. Exactly. David Cassidy. <laughs> Celebrity autobiography relies on a rotating really cast, many of them celebrities themselves. Tommy, damn. Like America's mom, Florence Henderson, playing, who else? Pamela Anderson. <laughs> Last minute coaching spills into the stairwell. Look, there's Brooke Shields. Who is this? Elizabeth. One night, Brooke channels Elizabeth Taylor. Eddie. Another night, Liz speaks through I Sherry Shepard. Taken. I want us to be together again. <sighs> it turns out that star love is often star-crossed. There are in the story of relationship gone wrong at least two versions. Who could forget the saga of Bert and Lonnie, told here in dueling autobiographies. That's Kristen Johnston as Lonnie Anderson and Ryan Reynolds as Bert Reynolds. No relation. He was sweet and tentative and gentle, almost as if he thought I was going to break. During the nonstop animal passion. <laughs> I mean, this whole show, I think, is just structured around, you know, celebrities' occasional lapse in judgment. I'm falling in love with you. Oh. I don't want you to see anyone else. We belong together. Okay. <laughs> Would you call the actual writing of the autobiography a lapse in judgment? That right there is the key lapse in judgment, is, is being a celebrity and saying, you know what, people need to hear who I really am. Kenny Loggins, there's of course Neil Sedaka. And then it was my turn. But whose words could I presume to interpret? One idea is one of our, one of our all time speaks. favorites. Vanna Speaks. Okay. By Vanna White. Yeah. Vanna, in fact, doesn't really speak, so it's, it, 
leaves a lot of room for interpretation. Mm -hmm. I, exactly. And but while I have a little Vanna in me, who doesn't? Merv says that he hired me because I turned the letters better than any of the 200 other women who auditioned. I have a whole other My side favorite? just waiting to be unleashed. Told... Let's talk about Mr. T. Well, I think it would be a perfect piece for you. And now please welcome to the stage Mo Rocca. Sorry, Vanna. I had to turn to Mr. T. So here is the unadulterated truth, told, written, and spoken in such terms that even a fool can understand what I am talking about. Then, quiet on set, please, everybody. Oh, I had a life of my own now. I, yes, I celebrity autobiographies have given us so nice much to talk about. Time. But we loved God how we loved passion and heartache. I pushed her off. No, I said. <laughs> Triumph and failure. Tears of pity began to well up in my badly made up eyes. But most of all, celebrities have I given have us that most precious thing of all, with themselves. Me. My gift is simply this, to be here with you as fully as the gods will allow and just let you Love me. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny Loggins.